Hello artists, you are moments away from really understanding how you can unlock your true potential and rid yourself of that burning desire of wanting to destroy absolutely everything that you make. Yes, I have that too a lot of the time. So let's jump straight into those three simple steps which will help you find your style. Tip number one, sit down in your studio space and wait for the divine light to descend upon you. <laughs> no, the light is you putting together a fantastic database of artworks that you absolutely love on Notion, on your desktop or whatever suits you best. And for those of you trying to get away with bookmarking a few things on Instagram and counting that as your database or research and also uh, maybe downloading a few photos on your phone from Google Images, stop. You need to, you need to grab all of those images and bring them away from distraction. Bring some order into your life. Because for the next stage, I'm getting you to just choose three of those artists and uh, just three because you need to really hone in and become laser focused when it comes to studying these artworks. Exposing yourself to too much work and too many artists is actually going to delay your progress because you're going to be practicing one type of imagery or maybe go on and it's being inspired by another and then practice another painting technique here which will evolve into another and you'll never actually become proficient at anything you're looking at because you're not really looking at it for a, a longer period of time and really focusing on what you're supposed to be developing. I get it, I've been there before. It's even hard for me sometimes today just to not sit down and copy artists' work, obviously for learning purposes. Um, just copy, let's just say, my top 30 favorite painters and just do that because it means you don't have to, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> come up with your own fantastic ideas. But you need to stop oversaturating your brain and come here, come here, come here so I can show you my current big three. You can see here in my Notion, I have set up my current interest because yes, even though you're only super focusing on three at a time, you can of course take an artist in or out depending on the direction your work is moving in. As you can see, I'm looking at the absolutely breathtaking Matthew Wong, the magical Dominique Fung, and how can you not appreciate Pierre Bonnard? This now brings me on to tip number two, which is the big why. You now need to transform into that child who has just learned how to ask why and uh, ask it to everyone to drive you absolutely insane. Oh, hi. As you gaze upon the amazing art that you have finally collected and organized, it is now time to truly start to wonder what exactly is it about that art that has pulled you in? I'm, uh, I'm pulling you in right now so I can show you just exactly what my interests are when it comes to the big three I just showed you. So here's how it works. First, we'll have a look at Matthew Wong, whose work just has such a vibrant beauty. And I'm absolutely obsessed with how he references artists such as Van Gogh, Matisse and Kusama but in a way that is still uniquely his own. I'm particularly drawn towards the actual surface quality of his paintings, and of course the intricate patterns that seem so effortlessly sewn throughout his work. Next up is Dominique Fung, and I'm completely in love with her unique use of color and also pay really close attention to the lighting of her paintings. The way she lights some of her interiors and invented semi-abstract landscapes it's just absolutely stunning and it's the subtleties that really just bring her paintings to life. Finally, we'll have a look at the legendary Pierre Bonnard. For Bonnard, I could probably list every aspect I've just spoken about, but I'm going to add another aspect and that is composition. One thing I've realized looking closely at his work is just how skilled he is at constructing his own spaces, reorganizing different elements and scaling, stretching, and warping perspectives to create his stunning paintings. But if you've been paying attention to the works I've been showing, you might have actually realized that many of the works can easily be compared to one another, whether it be down to the compositions, the mark making, the dramatic lighting, and also broader themes. So you've organized your database, you go all your artwork, you've now analyzed it, you've spotted maybe similarities or things that you are particularly interested in. What are you supposed to do with all this information now? 
That's where tip number three comes in. Work until your arms fall off. You now need to do absolutely everything you can to really understand just how your artists produce what they produce. If that wasn't clear enough, you just need to understand how they make their work. And I mean scouring every last bit of information that you can possibly get on them, whether that be through the internet, books, word of mouth if they're a contemporary artist, and you need to understand their sketches, their sketchbooks, how they plan a work, what paint they use, their daily habits, their favorite brand of tea, if they ever go outside and interact with society in any meaningful way or not. Some of this information will be available to you, whether that be online or through research, but the reality is you will not be able to have access to some of it which means you'll have to work it out yourself. This is where the factor of time steps in and pain. <laughs> it simply takes a long time to train your eyes and your brush to do what you want them to do. I've been oil painting for about 10 years now and when I stand in front of my favorite artists, sometimes I still feel extremely small. But that's okay because I've shown you how to work effectively in this video and it's really clicked for me. So I'm hoping it will click for you faster. Last of all, uh, I'm actually going to do a quick breakdown of the artists that we just looked at. How have I broken them down and implemented them into my own work? I'll give you some examples. In my sketchbook here, I basically realized my drawing and observational skills were decent but I couldn't really use pencil very well as a medium. When I was looking at Bonnard's drawings, I thought, aha, if anyone can teach me how to use pencil, it'll be Bonnard. So I did some studies of his sketches and then proceeded to draw my own garden with the mark making and tones I picked up from studying his work. Going forward, I'll definitely continue this loose way of sketching and the drawings I produce will certainly influence my gouache and oil paintings going forward. Next, we'll have a quick look at a small oil painting I did based off of studies that I sat and completed at the V&A Museum here in London. The painting features Eros from Greek mythology sleeping under the soft glow of the moon. In this painting, you can see me reaching towards the color schemes of Dominique Fung and attempting some of the brushwork and mark making of Matthew Wong. Personally, I don't believe that this piece is really that much of a success simply because the atmosphere I was going for, I didn't quite grasp it. And also, I don't think I was brave enough with the paint. Use, use enough paint, use enough paint. But that is simply part of the whole uh, artist journey, I guess you can say. You're gonna fail and fail and fail and fail and fail and fail again um, before something interesting starts to emerge. You can, you know, follow the stories of any successful artist and there's always stories of them destroying so much work. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just a reality. So be patient, bring order to your everyday practice, work hard, work very hard. And uh, if you're looking for more inspiration or ways to seriously improve your artwork, you're gonna wanna click on this video here and here is my awkward goodbye.